Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Monday, June 12, 2017. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please go to CADEX TV. Well, as we report right now, the uh, Conservative Party in the United Kingdom is meeting. The uh, discussion is how to deal with the election results of last Thursday in England. The real discussion is whether or not Theresa May is going to continue as Prime Minister. Uh, May has said through a spokesman last night that Britain's plan for leaving the European Union has not changed. She also said that Britain's plan for leaving the EU under the so-called hard Brexit strategy that she has outlined has not changed one bit. She said, our position is clearly set out in a number of places and there has been no change to that. The result of the election has forced her to search how to deal with a small party of Northern Irish politicians, the Democratic Unionist Party, uh, a group of 10 members of parliament in order to shore up her government, uh, which will allow her to steer her legislation through the House of Commons. Meanwhile, the vote for Labour, much larger than expected, is widely being perceived of as a rejection of the so-called hard Brexit. Uh, one tangible bit of evidence is that the so-called Queen's Speech, which is a formal occasion at which the government asks Parliament to approve its legislative agenda, which had been scheduled for June 19th, has now been pushed back indefinitely and will occur sometime later in June. There has been an earthquake uh, of apparently 6.3 magnitude on the Richter scale that struck uh, near Jakarta, about 110 miles away from it in Indonesia earlier this morning. No reports of any damage or injuries. Uh, the epicenter was about uh, 100 miles southwest of West Java's uh, Sukabumi city. Uh, again, no tsunami report either or any reports of damage or injuries. A China Eastern flight bound for Shanghai was forced to turn back to Sydney, Australia because of a mid-air emergency. This occurred earlier today. Uh, the plane was an Airbus 330-200 twin jet. Uh, it landed uh, without incident late last night. There were no injuries. The plane apparently had a gaping hole in the casing of one of its engines. According to the airline, the crew observed the abnormal situation of the left engine and decided to return to the Sydney airport immediately. All passengers and crew members uh, were landed safely. Photographs show a large gash well over a meter long in the casing of the left engine. A spokesperson for Rolls-Royce, which manufactured the plane's Trent 700 engine, said in a statement, we're aware of the incident and will be working closely with the relevant partners to understand the cause of the issue. An aviation expert at the University of South Wales in Sydney said it appeared that the engine cowling had been ripped away forward of the main compressor blade. Professor Jason Middleton said, when one of these things happens, you often don't know how the damage began. It could have, become, it could have begun from loose screws. In the Lloyds market, Nove's entire U.S. property cat treaty team will move to Fidelis now, Richard Brindle's Fidelis, along with the renewal rights to the $50 million premium book. As Nove CEO Matthew Frosch continues to radically reshape the stuttering London listed insurer, Nove had already struck a deal earlier this year to cede a big part of its uh, book uh, to Brindle's Fidelis following talks about a renewal rights deal. But according to the Insurance Insider, a decision has now been taken uh, for uh, transferring the four underwriters for the U.S. cat book led by Jonathan Gray direct to Fidelis. South Africa's property and casualty insurer is facing an even tougher year than expected after Cape Town experienced its worst storm in 30 years and dozens of fires engulfed the region around the town of Kiznia earlier this week, actually late last week, I should say. The South African insurers include Santum, Old Mutuals, uh, Mutual and Federal, and Rand Merchant Investment Holdings are already being battered by an economy that has slipped into recession, the country's credit rating downgraded to junk, and the continued political turmoil and unemployment at a 14-year high. The storms in Cape Town claimed at least nine lives, blew roofs off homes, flooded buildings, downed power lines, and forced schools to close on Wednesday for the rest of the week. Also, 26 fires broke out late Wednesday with severe devastation in at least 12 suburbs. General Electric said earlier today before uh, the stock market opened that its chairman and chief executive officer, Jeffrey Immelt, 
would retire at the end of the year in a leadership ship for the industrial giant. He's going to replace. He's going to be replaced by the top executive in its healthcare business, 55-year-old John Flannery, who is the president and CEO of GE Healthcare, will become chief executive of the overall conglomerate on August 1st, with the 61-year-old Immel remaining as chairman until he retires on December 31st. Flannery will then take that role up on January 1st. Last week, uh, a gentleman named Zbigniew Brzezinski passed away. He was 92 years old. Uh, he had been uh, the national security advisor to former President Jimmy Carter. Uh, President Carter flew from Atlanta to Washington, D.C. for the funeral services at St. Matthew's Cathedral in Washington. On the flight, apparently, it was a Delta flight from Atlanta to Washington's National. Uh, former President Carter took the time to shake the hand of every passenger on board the flight. Uh, he was photographed uh, by passengers uh, smiling and walking down the aisle, shaking hands with everybody on board. Uh, passengers, of course, have tweeted the video. It's been now replayed about 34,000 times. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.